Hey, good morning, everybody. Question on Syria and one on Iraq, if I may. And forces are. We're very clear with anyone in the region and working to deconflict where our forces are. If anyone, um, uh, we work to ensure that, that no one approaches or has any shows hostile intent toward our forces. And if they do, our commanders maintain the right of self defense. So go here, Tara. There's a number of different players in the region. Uh, we are going to continue with our efforts to maintain it, not just to keep it from ISIS, but as the Secretary has mentioned previously, uh, to provide the, um, the the Kurds in the area and the SDF with the forces to actually have a, a revenue stream and an ability to uh, to work on, on building up their strength for to, on the de-ISIS campaign. So it's preventing ISIS from getting it, uh, allowing the, the, the Kurds and the, the SDF in there to have uh, control of it as well. And that's why we're there, to help them go away. And those forces are needed, those, that equipment is needed based on the discretion of the commanders to ensure that mission is completed. No. The most important thing to us in, uh, in the Korean theater is maintaining readiness, being ready to fight tonight. So a year ago, we canceled the exercise Vigilant Ace, and that was based on the, uh, the environment on the peninsula at the time. This year, we're conducting a combined flying event, uh, U.S. and ROC Air Forces. And, uh, and General Abrams and his ROC counterpart are, are charged with ensuring that we're conducting the right number of combined events, the right type of combined events in order to maintain that readiness, maintain that integration so that we're, we're ready to fight tonight while allowing our diplomats the space and the room to continue negotiations with North Korea.